now bow and we ask God, wherever there is any sin or wrongdoing, Lord, we ask for forgiveness. Oh, God, corporately right now in Jesus' name. And, Father, we're always so very grateful for our leadership. Uh, thank you for how you continue to protect our Mayor Jackie Warner and her family, keep a hedge of protection around her. Not only her, God, but the rest of the commissioners and their families. God, we thank you and we pray for our leadership of the city of Hope Mills. And always, Lord, we are so humbled by the service of our first responders, oh Lord, and how they willingly put their lives in harm's way to protect the citizens here of Hope Mills and all around uh, the place of Fayetteville, God. We, we just thank you for them, and God, we ask that you would keep your warring angels around them, shield them, God, when their back is turned to danger. And we thank you now, and God, as we move forward now with the agenda, we always call on you, God, to endow us with your godly wisdom. We have man's wisdom, but you alone, God, are the one that direct the paths of humanity, and we thank you, Lord, and we commit everything into your hands this evening. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs burst At this time, do we have any additions or deletions to our agenda? Motion to approve. Have a motion to approve. Second. We have a motion to second. All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Seeing none opposed. At this time, we have some special um, presentations. And I'm going to ask if they would not mind, if the commissioners would go down front, and I will let you uh, present the certificates as I read the names. And I'm going to let all of you participate because we got quite a lot of certificates to give. And if I'll, I'll hand them over to uh, Mayor Pro Tem, and that way we can uh, give out these special certificates of recognition. <laughs> right down there. Right down there. That way I can, I'll, I'll, say, I'll read them and we'll, we'll do this since we're on a time crunch. We'll, we'll, this recognition is important. As many of you know, we just completed our lake celebration, a party at the lake, and we also had 4th of July. And with that, we had a tremendous support from everyone in our town. We had our uh, different groups that not only helped us, but they also did uh, extra hours. And it was a fantastic celebration. We had uh, 
not only did we have great turnout, but from Saturday all the way to Wednesday, only kudos to the town. So our town staff has made this possible, along with some special people. And as I call your name, if you're if uh, possible, if you'll come to the front, and then I want everybody to stay at the front as, until we get all these done. The first we're going to recognize is our Hope Mill CERT team, and that's Gregory Dickerson. Melody Dickerson, <laughs> Mark Bryan, Mike Boast, Bonnie Boast, Evelyn Barnes, Renee Carlisle. Pam Hatton, David Ikes, Monica Myrick, Jeff Neto, the Cumberland County CERT Group, Ruth Farley, Marlon Scott, And we may have we may have um, some of our sponsors here, but if not, um, I'll call their, the name of the business that sponsored the Lake Celebration out. And if there's someone here with that business, if you'll come forward. If not, we'll make sure we get it to the business. Uh, BB and T, Cape Fear Flooring and Restoration, they've sponsored our beach dance event and paid for the DJ. Hope Mills Chamber of Commerce, they were the event flyer sponsor for the Lake Celebration. Is there anyone here from the Chamber? Cumulus Media, they were here for all the events and uh, broadcast each event so that we could make sure everybody knew what was going on. Ken Laws, they provided food for the Heroes on the Water and the Hope Mills Police and Fire Departments and Volunteers on July 4th and also on Sunday. Members Credit Union, they were a cardboard boat race sponsor, and they also, uh, they were the big sponsor in that they paid for the t-shirts that we used, and that was a $1,000 sponsor for the cardboard boat race. The VFW Post 10 630, they sponsored the cardboard boat race, and they were the ones that provided the trophies. And I think uh, Commissioner Bellflowers, Bellflowers can accept. <laughs> uh, Walmart for participating in the in the lake celebration they also provide a gift card um, he didn't want to know didn't want to be receiving a certificate but Grilly Mitchell because he was an event sponsor not al along with being on the lake committee but he sponsored the beach dance event beach dance event Grilly Mitchell Chris Hall was responsible for the Hope Mills um, Heroes on the Water celebration Sandy Hardy was on our Lake Celebration Committee. Patricia Jenkins was on our Lake Celebration Committee. Robert Bob, Bob Kretzu, and he we know he's I'll take his. He's our pastor that was in charge of the church at the lake and also the art and jazz festival. Kenjuana McCrae. She was responsible for uh, art and jazz, and she also helped with church at the lake. Jessica Seagroves from the Hope Mills Chamber, and she worked uh, on the committee, but she also helped with the beach dance. Brent Spivey was chairman of the cardboard boat race. Jan Spell worked with the chamber. Jesse Bellflowers was our board liaison on our Lake Celebration Committee. Commissioner Legg was our board liaison on the Lake Celebration Committee. Then for our, our fire, fry, fire department, we have firefighter Lee Brock, firefighter Jeffrey Dodson, firefighter Jacob Getty, assistant chief Wayne Dutterer, deputy fire chief Steve Lopez, Fire Chief Chuck Hodges, not only did they provide the, the water rescue 
for anything that might have gone wrong with the kayaks and the cardboard boat race but they also were the judges for our peers and they were also there diligently every day to make sure things ran smoothly extra hours extra time all next we had sergeant lee sumners with our police department <laughs> officer brad alley officer kadani joseph officer anthony mendez officer louis Minos, officer maurice perez officer tawny robinette Officer Derek Rowland, Officer, um, this is Derek Rowland, and Chief Richardo, I don't have one for you, but by golly, you were here and you worked hard, so we need to make sure the Chief gets one too. All right, from our Parks and Rec staff, Jamie Baha Bama, Tim Bright, Keith Bryant, April Dublin, Maxie Dove, Ann Ivanko, Megan Hawkins, James Willie Hobbs, Paulette Hobbs, Casey Ivey, Lisa Ryan, Julie Smackjet, Smogdeck. I knew I'd get that one wrong. <laughs> <coughs> Gary Smith, James Washington, and Kenny Bullock. I would also like to ask our the representatives not to receive a special certificate because they're wearing theirs. They're wearing their count, crown and they're wearing their sashes. But I'd like to recognize if she's here, we miss Harper Sullivan. We have junior miss Alexandra Jackson, young miss Bailey Carentine Quatron, teen miss Carrie Dees, and Miss Hope Mills, Lydia Ann Dilday. If these two queens would come forward, not only did they come to every event, but they stayed. So just know they represent us well already, and congratulations to them. <laughs> I, think, I think we need a round of applause. And something that I think is very, very important that um, this group, not only did they um, work tirelessly for many days, and our commissioners attended the, the festivities, and we had not only a good representation for Hope Mills, but there's someone special that I would like to recognize from the board and something special that we want to do. And I'm reading a proclamation now, so all of you will know, because I'm sure you would all will agree with this. This person has been an invaluable employee of the town of Hope Mills. He has served this community well since October 2006. Three, these years of service have been marked by numerous hours of selfless dedication to ensure all town events are flawless and to the best interest of the community, as he has worked for the betterment of the Parks and Rec Department. Through the performance of his duties and responsibilities as the Parks and Recreation Director of the Town of Hope Mills, he has made excellent and constructive contributions to the Parks and Recreation Department in our town. And now, therefore, I, Jackie Warner, Mayor of the Town of Hope Mills, proclaim Friday, July the 20th, 2018, as Kenny Bullock Day in Hope Mills. And this... And I, and I want you to know that on this special day, we ask that you give him all the special attention you can and also know that something that's very important, he was tasked this year by this board, and it was very awkward at the time, that they wanted this parade not to have any gaps, not to be too long, and to move fast and move from point A to point B and allowed him for an hour. The parade not only was beautiful, it was 59 minutes. Congratulations. Great job. <laughs> we're not giving you off, but we're going to give you some special attention. All right. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for making these, these events great, and thank you for all your help contributing to 
the success of, of Lake Celebration and the July 4th. Thank you. We'll support you just like y'all support us. Thank you so much. That day you get all kinds of special attention from us. And those CERT team members that came to support the rest know that we appreciate everything you do and that we'll call on you because we know you come when we call. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to recognize Joel Strickland, and uh, he is going to presenting to us the Hope Mills Congestion Management Plan. And again, this is um, the final plan, and you have someone here with you from Kendallson too. I do. Okay, and um, I'll turn it over to, to Joel Strickland, Joel, who is with Joel, FAMPO. If you can bear with me a second. Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, we'd be remiss not to recognize our mayor. She uh, showed tremendous leadership during the uh, Lake Celebration. She worked tirelessly through the heat with uh, on every event, and uh, we need to give her a round of applause. She really worked hard. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. It was time for our party, and we did it. <laughs> now, I'll turn it over to you, Joel. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you for letting us come tonight. Um, I came a little over a year ago to this board and told you we were going to be starting this plan. We've had the money set aside for how long, Mayor? Four or five years to do this plan, and we finally got 2013. 2013. Okay, we finally got around <laughs> to doing it. Um, and just to give you a little recap, um, we went through a request for proposals um, about a year and a half, two years ago. We hired the Kittleson Group um, out of Wilmington to do this plan for the town to look at ways to relieve uh, congestion within the Hope Mills town limits and um, not just looking at roads, but looking at multimodal ways to relieve congestion. So looking at all sorts of uh, forms of transportation. And we also tasked them with looking a little bit outside the box at um, some ways to relieve congestion as we didn't want to disrupt the, the natural characteristics of the town. Um, so with me tonight, I've got Mr. Zach Bug from Kittleson, and um, he's going to give you the, the overview and give you a presentation. Good evening. Um, thanks for inviting us today. So I have about um, 10 or 15 minutes worth. Um, I won't go long. Um, I want to give you a little bit of an idea of the project background, um, the public engagement that we did um, as a series of public meetings here in the town right next door, um, how we assessed the needs of the town um, and looked at a, a series of alternatives and then eventually made a recommendation. I'd um, like to share with you the project recommendations that were laid out in the plan um, and then the outcomes um, that we're hoping to see. Um, as a background, this is a part of the federal congestion management process that's required um, every several years uh, for each major MPO to outline a series of um, projects that they see the need for um, potential safety uh, and mobility needs. Um, so that process was initiated last year in May. Um, we got started kind of around June, July. Um, visited Hope Mills for the first time in August, so it's been a really great um, experience to kind of see the town over the last year. Um, focusing on safety, connectivity, mobility, um, accessibility of all transportation users within the town limits. Um, through this process, we worked with uh, FAMPO and also the public and the stakeholders to uh, create a series of project goals and objectives. These uh, closely resemble a lot of MPO's uh, 
overall general project goals and objectives, and I'll list them here. Um, I won't read the words off the screen here, but you can see we really are focusing on mobility, safety of all the users, trying to maintain the historic nature and context of the town, um, and also provide connections between town landmarks such as the lake and the municipal park here. Um, a, a series of public engagement meetings. Um, we got started back in September of last year, had another one in December, and then also um, one in March. In September, we focused on um, asking what the needs were in the town um, based off of public comments, also um, formulating through working with the stakeholders um, at the MPO and CDOT and with the town here, um, and also based off of uh, data collection. So we focused on identifying the needs at that time, uh, letting the public drive the process, um, at the December meeting, we presented a set of alternatives and a set of um, potential recommendations um, and got town feedback on that. Um, and then in March, we uh, delivered the draft recommendations at that point and asked for just any final refinement and public comment. Um, we met with the stakeholder group every time before we met with the, um, with the public um, to screen and refine our, our solutions. So we had a, a pretty good turnout at each of the public meetings. Um, there were weeknights here in the um, recreation hall, uh, between 30 and 50 community members each. Um, we described different alternatives, different recommendations, looking at new sidewalks and crosswalks, bicycle treatments, um, potential roadway, major roadway treatments, and then also some intersection treatments. Um, we received feedback through public comment, traditionally in the uh, in-person setting, and then also through an online survey and an online commenting map. It had a pretty strong uh, social media and also online commenting uh, presence. Um, I won't go into a lot of technical details here, but we really looked at uh, a few different types of alternatives. The challenge of this project was that it was uh, pretty open-ended. Um, it was also a good opportunity and made for a, a really interesting, fun project. Um, there was no set corridor that we were trying to develop alternatives for. It was really, here's everything in the town, identify the needs, and then pick and choose where the different alternatives come into play and where it makes sense to look at things. Um, so we looked at different roadway alternatives, different cross sections, when you talk about what are the different things within the roadway right of way that you're looking at, and then also intersection treatments. Um, each alternative, uh, we really tried to base that on a series of performance measures that align with the project goals and objectives that we I listed a little bit earlier. Um, in terms of assessment methodology, um, these are some of the evaluation metrics and performance measures that we looked at. It was um, just a, a few different things that had to do with um, each of the different modes. There was a crash data, a safety conflict type element in there. We looked at delays, vehicular delays, level of service, queuing. Um, and then another big part of this project, which I think the MPO, um, this was a unique project for me because um, it, it really focused on implementable solutions and not just pie in the sky, but what are the things that are going to get NCDOT funding? How can we phrase the recommendations and really get this stuff built and funded um, instead of just saying, well, if we had everything, then we would do it this way. Um, so hopefully um, that, that turns into some actual project work. So what are the recommendations? Uh, we looked at a, a series of cross sections for different major corridors here in Hope Mills, um, looking at Camden Road, Rockfish Road, Golfview Road, um, and then also uh, a portion of Main Street, looking at what are the number of lanes, um, and different sidewalk and bicycle treatments that um, you could potentially put within that right of way. Um, not all of these cross sections will fit within the existing right of way. There will be a few, um, a few easements along the way, but uh, predominantly we looked at things that are pretty context sensitive here. Um, and again, we, we gave a series of different renderings like this to the public and asked which one would you prefer. And so what you see here is what was the favorite and then also what was kind of screened by us. Um, for a pet bike type situation, we looked at um, a series of just sidewalk needs across town. There's a kind of a lack of general connectivity of the sidewalk network in town that was recognized by the public. Um, and uh, we went through and just, we figured out if we had everything we wanted, then we would do kind of all of the pink lines on here. But if we had to prioritize, you would look at just the dark pink, um, looking at things like how can you connect the major corridors, um, the major landmarks within town, and really do the most bang for your buck, so to speak. Uh, we also looked at crosswalks and different um, crosswalk treatments, both at signalized intersections and then um, at unsignalized crosswalks, like out here across uh, Rockfish Road. 
Um, we looked at 20 different areas and then proposed a series of treatments from a suite of treatments for each, really looking at what was the most, uh, what made the most sense at each. Um, and again, this has all been put through a public commenting process and kind of working with the public to see um, what was preferred. Um, the town established um, kind of early on uh, that, that they wanted to make a vision for public transportation within the town and having connections to other areas within the MPO. Um, and so we kind of built on a, a previously developed plan with VAST and some of the other stakeholders around the area um, and then really looking at where are the areas in town with the highest propensity for a transit use um, and the highest need for transit and if there's people that don't have cars or a little bit more dense areas of town. Um, so this plan, it's, it's kind of an ultimate concept and we're not looking at the detail of having stops and service lines and everything like that, but if this is meant to be kind of a vision, connecting to Cross Creek Mall and other landmarks within the area. Um, in terms of major roadway recommendations, um, we wanted to come up with some big concepts that would kind of fall within the higher levels of the NCDOT prioritization list. Um, again, these, these were all public comments. So each of these kind of rose from um, something that we heard in the public meeting that was reinforced by several comments. So the first is the orange lines here. Um, that is kind of your traditional roadway widening, looking at going from two to four lanes, um, Camden Road, Rockfish Road, Golfview Road, and then also Main Street. These are currently within the NCDOT uh, funding process, and they have funding allocated, but we really wanted to look at those and see, well, what if you did build those up? Uh, what would it do to the traffic, and kind of where is it is widening the most necessary? The green lines here was the second alternative that we looked at. Um, it's really more conceptual as it's presented here, but it's really forming a little bit more of a roadway grid within town so that you don't have to use a major corridor such as Main Street to get around town, um, looking at how do you connect some of the lower level local streets within town um, to provide that connectivity, both when you're walking and when you're driving. Uh, the pink line here is another somewhat conceptualized alternative. Uh, we didn't look at specific alignments yet, but um, really prioritizing the NC 162 highway as a bypass of town um, and just providing another, con um, another connection there to I-95 um, where there is none right now. We also looked at a series of intersection concepts. Um, and what I'm showing you here are kind of the preferred concepts, but um, in terms of the, the level of this study, we didn't really get down into looking at um, uh, high detailed models and running a very detailed level of traffic analysis. We try to keep it a little bit higher level. Um, and the sketch that you see here is mostly uh, preliminary and would not really involve uh, specific right-of-way lines, driveway, curb cut, and everything like that. So I kind of want to preface what you see here with that. Um, this concept for Main Street and Camden Road was really developed off of um, a series of performance measures that we identified and tried to prioritize some things over another with the realization that there is a trade-off at this intersection. This is one of the worst intersections in town. Um, we looked at traditional widening and adding turn lanes and found that the only way to really meet the level of service threshold the NCDOT would like to see, uh, which is LOSD, in the design year, which was 2040, is to go to a six-lane section on one of these two streets. Um, and kind of hearing from um, stakeholders that that's really not the town's plan to go to three lanes each direction on a road. Um, that's kind of not in the character of the town. We looked at other ways. Um, it's still an option, so not throwing that completely off the table. Um, but our goal here was to say, well, if you didn't do that, how could you still make it work at LOSD? And so this is. Um, a concept called the median U-turn. It's implemented um, across North Carolina in different forms. It's predominantly implemented in Michigan um, where it's been for decades. Um, but the idea here is that you would, uh, instead of making a left turn at the main intersection, you would either turn right and make a U-turn, come back, or you would make a U-turn and then make a right turn. Um, so this, it, it greatly makes the, the efficiency of the intersection go up because you're not waiting on left turn vehicles to clear the intersection. Um, and it also cuts down on the number of vehicular angle collisions that could happen. Um, so again, it's just a concept. We wanted to come up with a way to achieve those goals um, without going to a six lane section here. Another concept, again, um, looking at a couple of different things at the intersection right out here, Golfview and Rockfish. Um, looking at this intersection and having worked on um, 
a lot of roundabout feasibility studies across the U.S. looking for um, things that might um, solve some of the issues at this intersection, such as heavy delay and queuing, um, also a pretty high crash, uh, crash frequency. Um, looking at what are the ways that you could uh, solve some of those issues. Um, one is to do kind of traditional widening, um, making the intersection uh, potentially a five lane section with left turn lanes or right turn lanes. Um, another way to do that is to keep it single lane but do a roundabout. Um, the roundabout is um, an intersection that's been implemented around Fayetteville recently. Um, really over the past 10, 15 years, um, it is a way to greatly reduce the severity of collisions and also uh, make for a more efficient traffic flow um, because you don't have to stop at the intersection if there's no one coming. So um, again, it's an option. Uh, we were able to draft a concept that greatly cuts down on the impacts, uh, the right-of-way impacts of, of this, um, but there is definitely a trade-off. So um, while keeping um, kind of all the options on the table, we went with this as our, our preferred concept based on um, kind of all the data that we looked at. Um, another intersection that we uh, took a look at within town was the Camden and Rockfish Road uh, intersection. This is currently uh, under design and under evaluation by NCDOT. It's actually a feasibility study. It's not designed yet. Um, but looking at ways to turn the, uh, the scissors or bow tie intersection into a couple of different intersections um, and really teeing it up, making it a little bit safer to drive through. Uh, we don't have to yield to oncoming traffic if you're making a left turn. Um, and then also just kind of making it a little bit more walkable. Um, crossing the intersection it is today, there's um, not a whole lot out there for you. So looking at ways to um, kind of make that a little bit better. Um, and at this time, we have not chosen either one of those concepts and we're gonna be respectful to the other NCDOT project that is examining those at this time. So um, looking at all the draft project recommendations that was released in the final technical report last, last month, um, FAMPO staff are gonna take um, a series of recommendations within the project and draft them, um, look at local input, again, refine, <coughs> um, utilizing those to prioritize which projects that they then ask for NCDOT funding in the next prioritization process. Uh, that will happen um, kind of over the next couple of years. Actually, I think it's later this fall will be the, the first set in that process. Um, so if you want more information, I know I've probably gone over here, um, but there's uh, the project report will be posted on the FAMPO website, and I've listed Joel's information, and then um, please contact me if you have any other follow-up, uh, any details that you'd like to hear. Thank you. Thank you, and we appreciate the fact that this was done. This is something that will help us with traffic congestion. But I think the main thing for our citizens to understand is that it's also a way to get it in front of DOT for funding. Um, you yeah. have to have a plan to get funding, yeah. and this is one way when they do these kinds of studies that then they come back and, and they prioritize it for funding. And I think we're up there uh, because of the number of cars that traverse our roads. I know we're already being considered from some additional funding because where growth has been so much. So I appreciate everything you've done. And I appreciate uh, you coming this evening to share. Is there anything or any comments from the board? I'd like to ask a question. Yes. Okay. <coughs> Is there anything during the studies to this point that can be done <coughs> between the railroad trussel and the other end of town? The, um, you're asking about providing more connections um, across the railroad tracks? Yes. Okay. Is there any way we can relieve that pressure because you know, the expansion at 301 now is mm -hmm. potentially going to throw a lot more traffic into a bottleneck already. So is there any way that we can do anything about relieving some of that pressure on Main Street from the Trussell to the other end of town? One of the alternatives here was the NC-162 uh, extension that would create a parallel route to NC-59 from I-95, so that's one way we looked at it. Um, predominantly, we were trying to shy away from widening Main Street through the middle of town based on some of the feedback we heard. Um, and again, that objective to really keep the town's historic nature and not disrupt that um, through the middle of town. So those are kind of the things we looked at. Um, there's not an easy solution to where that underpass is. Um, that's how we examined it. Thank you. Madam Mayor. Um, yes, sir. Were our public safety departments, were they involved in the process? They were. Um, we had 
um, several folks, the fire department was uh, invited to the meetings. Um, as far as stakeholders go, we did have representatives from the school board. Um, and that's pretty much the extent of it. I mean, just for the. Mr. Flynn would be very involved with the project, and I know he puts a lot of stuff back to the emergency group for them to look at. I don't know if there's any concerns about the roundabout with our fire trucks. We did um, pass along some information. Um, anytime there's a roundabout, especially one that's right next to a fire station, um, there's a lot of questions and feedback such as that. Um, there is a pretty large amount of information about how to turn even large ladder trucks in roundabouts and how to design them using a truck apron and so forth um, to really make that possible. Um, so I feel pretty confident that that alternative if designed and again this would be a later project um, the roundabout feasibility would be um, if designed correctly that it would not be an encumbrance to the public safety and school buses I guess too yes yeah, same it, it may actually improve conditions based on improving traffic flow Thank you. any other comments all right thank you so much appreciate it thank, thank you, you. Joel, for thank coming you. and seeing mm -hmm. us this time I have one other proclamation to read and this is um, recognizing 100 years of Warrant Officer Association service whereas Warrant Officer serve as, a quiet prof as the quiet professionals and whereas the Fortress Braxton Bragg Silver Chapter Warrant Officer Association has been in existence for 100 years and whereas the association is an approved nonprofit that raises money and gives it away assisting surrounding communities and families through chapters located around the world. And whereas the Fort Bragg chapter is one of the largest chapters and provides VA visits, wounded warrior donations, habitat programs, and food pantry donations to include holiday gifts for families. Now therefore be it resolved that I, Jackie Warner, Mayor of the Town of Hope Mills, do hereby proclaim Monday, July 9, 2018 as the Fort Bragg Silver Chapter Warrant Officer Association's 100th Centennial Celebration in the town of Hope Mills in tribute to warrant officers on active duty, reserve, guard, retired, and their families, and urge all citizens to join us in honoring you and remembering your service. Okay. Okay. Next, we have um, no public hearings, and the next thing we have is public comments. A reminder with public comments, each speaker is limited to three minutes in the total comment period, and we have two that have signed up for uh, comments, um, and the first one is Mr. Bill Spate. Good evening. I'm Bill Spate, United States Air Force Lieutenant Colonel, retired. I'm a Hope Mill resident of 43 years. My military record reflects 24 decorations, 13 in combat, including the Distinguished Flying Cross. I come before the board as a veteran and resident, and my purpose tonight is to ask the board a very simple question. Would someone please say the status of the proposed loan survivor project presented to the board? Folks, I may have three minutes, but please don't insult me or the rest of the town by hiding behind this executive session cloak. There are no secrets in Hope Mills. If you don't believe it, go to McDonald's or Hardy's the next morning, and you can find out all about what happened. The proposal, according to the lone survivor people in Houston, Texas, was presented and they have not received a positive response. 
though it may be an issue close to the Hope Mills or the Hope Mills board and you may not be able to address it, I think a project of this magnitude should be made aware of the public. This Commissioner Legg and I served on the joint, the planning board for several years and we spent a good bit of time over one lot. We're talking about a major project. Might it be appropriate for me to say what the loan project, excuse me, the loan survival project is in public? First, it's common knowledge. And I appreciate your hiding behind the cloak. But for the attending town people and press, let me say a bit of what this is all about. The Lone Survivor Foundation is a nonprofit organization that provides therapeutic retreats to service members and families who are affected by post traumatic stress, mild traumatic brain injury, chronic pain, and military sexual trauma. I trust you have heard that before. In 2017, 38 retreats for 30, 335 veterans and families were held at no cost. The U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs estimates PTSD affects, is that my three minutes? For the attending people, I will say this. I have a copy of my presentation, pictures of the project and quite a bit of information that I would like for the town to share, regardless of hiding behind, and I challenge the board for hiding behind this closed session, and his attorney knows. So unless I'm given an additional couple of minutes, thank you for the time. Next uh, speaker is Mr. Joe Riddle. Thank you, Mayor Warner, members of the town board. Uh, my name is Joe Riddle, and I'm a 62-year resident of Fayetteville. Uh, I thought I was going to be in Hope Mills. I lived in Gates 4 and managed the club back in the 70s, and we were hoping that we were going to be part of Hope Mills, but somehow uh, y'all gave us away to Fayetteville. Um, what I, the reason I wanted to speak uh, I was trying to be here for the discussion about the sign ordinance. Um, I just have some concerns because I'm not real sure exactly where the town's trying to go with the sign ordinance. Um, I own some properties on Main Street and uh, some are developed and some aren't. Um, I'm more concerned right now with the ones that are already developed. One I manage for another owner, which is the old Hope Mills Plaza that Mr. Henley used to own. And uh, when I took it over in maybe about 05, helping manage it, there were seven or eight pylons out there. It was ridiculous. Every store had a pylon. And we were able to combine all those signs into two, two pylon signs. Uh, but if you read the ordinance the way it's written now, those are, some of those might be out of code. You know, the roads have been widened a lot over the years. That's an old shopping center. I mean, it's the oldest one in town. And so I'm not real sure if the, if the signs are far enough from the right of way. You know, they've had a recent project with the islands. They're getting ready to do a project on Camden Road. I have Pine Knoll, which is a little center with the Japanese restaurant. It used to be Beef O'Brady's. My pylon there is 108 <coughs> square feet, and this code allows for 100. So it's eight square feet over the code, uh, unless I add another shop. Because if you add another shop, you get 10 more square feet. But anyway, my point is, you know, I don't know how you're going to grandfather people. I don't know how soon you're going to make them tear their sign down if it doesn't meet code. I mean, what is the purpose? I know that the letter I got from Chancellor, you know, he was really uh, pushing the problems with portable signs, which I don't have any portable signs. And I understand Fayetteville used to have a lot of those with the flashing errors and all that and also about temporary banners, which really the only time we have temporary banners is when you have a grand opening. I think that limiting it to one week is really, that's really short. I think it, it ought to be a month, but two weeks would be better. But I think Fayetteville's a month on temporary banners. 
but I do understand you have a problem. People putting these white, we buy house signs everywhere, and you have to have some rules. So I'm not against the rules. I just wanted to bring up these questions and see if there's a way that y'all could answer those for me so I would know what to expect on the ones. And I really believe that there will be hundreds of code violations if you get strict and follow this code and people aren't grandfathered. Uh, there's a lot of signs that are too close to the right of way now, and uh, there's probably going to be more road projects here too. So that's that's all I had, and I appreciate working with the town. I, I love Hope Mills. I it's gotten so strict in Fayetteville. I'm, I've come out here. I'm hoping y'all are not going to get too strict. Uh, <laughs> Fayetteville ran me off from my own town, and I'm I'm getting ready to do some nice things on Main Street that the town will like. I'm going to bring some good restaurants and retailers that that you don't have that you need. So thank I hope so to work much. with you. Thank you. Thank Mr. you Riddle, so much. We did go through a five-year transition period on that, or we're going to. But we, oh. we, haven't, we haven't finalized anything yet. That's what we're looking yeah. at. Yeah. And uh, there'll be a, it'll be brought back to the board at our next board meeting, and then it'll be going to the Joint Planning Board for <coughs> approval. So there's a process, but they did say tonight that five years would be the grandfathered time. also thinking about going to no pylon so you'll have to throw the pylon away and build a monument well that's where and that's going to be really expensive for people that you know that i mean i'm just saying you know uh, like mr mcclam owns the, the the hope mills plaza that henley and yarber used to own and he's spending 120 grand i think behind the center right and 140 grand paving that alley that the town gave up it's dirt back there that connects those two streets that go beside it it'd be it's going to be expensive to you know five years isn't very long it goes by just like that i'm 62 and it seems like i was 30 yesterday okay. uh, i know the feeling but <laughs> thank you <laughs> there's going to be a lot of people that, that this is going to impact that may not know how much it's going to impact them until it until they get the letter so thank you sir madam mayor if it may uh mr spade if it's okay with my fellow elected is it okay for us to instruct our town attorney to send a letter to lone survivor uh, regarding our decision in closed session, yes. Would that be okay? That would be fine. Is that okay with you? Yeah. What was the question again? Is it okay if we instruct the town attorney to send a letter regarding our decision regarding the lone survivor uh, proposed project? Highly recommend. Would that be okay? You guys okay with that? Yeah. I believe a, a phone call has been made, but it is it is still there. Yeah, if we could codify a letter or something. Next, we have our consent agenda, and on the consent agenda, we have consideration of approval of the minutes from the June 18, 2018 regular meeting, consideration of approval of the minutes from the June 18, 2018 closed session, and consideration of the Mosquito Agreement with the Town of Spring Lake. Is there anything you'd like moved from the consent agenda, or is the consent agenda approved as read? Motion to approve. We have a motion to have a second. Second. All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Seeing none opposed. Old business, consideration of the year-end budget amendment number 40 in the amount of $231,400 for FEMA repairs. Is there, Ms. Adams, you have anything you want to say in reference to this? No, Madam Mayor, this is just cleaning up uh, some bookkeeping issues. Okay, any questions Does from anybody the board? Have any questions? Motion okay. to approve budget amendment number 40 for the FEMA road repairs in the amount of 231.4. I have a motion to have a second. Second. All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. Seeing none opposed. Next we have new business, consideration of the ordinance 2018-02 for a charter amendment to alter the terms served by board members to four year staggered terms and resolution 2018-14 for special election referendum. So this is the, the ordinance that we've discussed a couple of times. Um, the, the only substantive change to the ordinance, and it's very minor, is just at the very end um, where we, we say that the it only takes effect upon approval of majority vote of the citizens of Hope Mills or, or by the board. Um, so the ordinance is, is written here in tab four, and then on the last page of that, you'll also see a resolution um, that the board would also need to adopt along with the ordinance um, that would uh, ask, you know, be an official request by the board to the board of directors to place the following resolution. 
motion and separate motion. Uh, it's just a separate motion for the ordinance and then also for the resolution. And I'd be happy to answer any questions the board may have as well. Any questions? Uh, motion to approve uh, consideration of ordinance 2018-02 for a charter amendment to alter the terms served by the board members to four year staggered terms. I have a motion to have a second. I second. second that motion. I just want to make sure that the citizens of the town have the right to do, make this choice and not us. That'll be the next motion. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Seeing none opposed. And motion to approve resolution 2018-14 for a special election referendum. I have a motion and have a second. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Seeing none opposed. Next, we have consideration of the town water quality testing policy for Hope Mills Lake, and I'll turn this over to our town manager. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I'm going to let um, I'm going to let our stormwater administrator because I tasked her with um, the project of coming up with a sampling policy that we could implement even though we are not required to um, in the best interest of health and public health and safety we feel that um, it's something that we would like to do and if you all approve then we'll implement it um, I believe our town attorney has reviewed it I'm not sure if he's got any concerns about it uh, uh, yeah I, I took a look at it and I may want to mess around with the language just a little bit um, but this is this is you know to give y'all a good sense of what type of regulation we're looking for and what type of ordinance we're looking for. Yeah. I don't think it's ready to necessarily Approved vote tonight. tonight. Yeah, but this is just to put it in front of the board for consideration. We can bring it back at the next meeting um, once he makes his recommend recommended changes, um, if that's the wishes of the board. But I'm going to let. Um, Miss Brown kind of go over the the meat of it okay so good evening um, I'm just gonna be brief I know you guys have the copy um, what we did was basically mimic what Wake County is doing so <clears throat> in my conversations with the state representatives basically we are we're not required to do any type of testing and we're not required to do any type of notification but in the best interest of the residents in the town um, and also the folks that are coming from outside of town to use our facilities we feel like it's probably best to have something in place um, this is not a very in-depth policy um, it is just a policy in writing for our own internal sampling. And what we did was mimic Wake County's, which was at the recommendation of the state. Um, theirs is actually done through their county health department. So they are required to do it. But the requirements, some of the things that they do, some of the testing that they do is not actually, there are no standards for North Carolina. They're using EPA standards, which North Carolina does not recognize the standards or ha has not adopted those standards set by the EPA. Um, so what you're looking at is basically just an overview of the reason that we're doing it, why we're doing it, um, and obviously there's some legal language in there. We, we're planning to do continue doing water sampling um, once a month from April to September. Um, if we do get high fecal bacteria levels, there is the potential for the town to close the swimming area down. Um, that's if needed. Uh, we feel like the signage, um, which is part of this, we're gonna put up some signage down at the lake, which is just a notification to anybody using the lake that, hey, you know, everything's good. It's always gonna be swim at your own risk. Um, we don't know what's coming through there on a daily basis. That water's constantly moving. We can go in and take a grab sample right now and five minutes later take a grab sample in the same spot and it's going to come up very different. So um, we're also going to be testing once a year, not every month from April to September, but just once a year for E. coli and enterococci. 
Um, those are different types of bacteria. Those are the two that the state of North Carolina does not have any standard levels for. Um, EPA has set some, but we're going to go ahead and sample so that we have a baseline of what is in the lake each year at the beginning before we open. The notification, quite obviously, is exactly what it is. It's to notify the public of what we found, um, and it will be swim at your own risk unless the town staff and town manager or town board decides to close down the swimming area, which we have the ability per this policy or ordinance to actually do. Um, the signage will be simple, green, yellow, red, just like the stoplight. I think everybody can follow that. Um, we will probably need to have it in English and Spanish as well. Mm -hmm. We're currently working on a, like a draft of the sign, um, so that will come back before you as well. And then the fourth page that you're looking at is all Dan's page. <laughs> um, that's not my forte, so he'll have to go through that. I know that they actually have, uh, Wake County has some, they have the ability to fine if you violate, um, and I'm not sure we're necessarily looking at that. Dan and I had a brief conversation about it, but I'm sure he'll provide comments to us um, with his recommendation on the legal aspect. So are there any questions about the policy or why we're putting it in place from the board or mayor? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is there any estimated cost associated with this at this time that you know of? With what? Or the testing and the results and everything. So uh, the testing lab that we use is Microbac. Um, I can tell you that the E. coli sample and the fecal sample together was $50. I know the fecal sample was $32. Um, so for each sample we take is $32 to test. Thank you. Yes, sir. Any other questions? Mayor. Yes, sir. How frequent are we going to test in the future? So we will be testing from April until September once a month. Okay. Unless we find something that is extremely high, then we would test once weekly basically for a th or it's five samples over a 30-day period okay. um, and that's to find out what's coming through um, kind of like we did before yep. <coughs> the numbers were really really high so yep. we did the sampling everything most everything came mm -hmm. back 15 of the 16 samples came back well below the state mm -hmm. limit so I mean I've, I feel I felt confident that we weren't opening up a swimming area that was going to be <coughs> contaminated with fecal bacteria. So, Beth, are we te each month are we testing in a different location? So we have um, there are four the four sample sites that we mm -hmm. gave you um, at the very beginning. Those are the four set sites that we will be sampling, and we've got one in the swimming area, one mm -hmm. on the opposite side of the lake, one coming over the dam, and then one at the very headwaters of the lake. And I feel that gives us representative of kind of what's going on around the whole lake, not just the swimming area. Right. <coughs> okay. Any other question? Yeah, and in consultation with um, the state lady, I believe she indicated that was a that was yes. well above what so oh ap yeah what we needed. Apparently, the mm -hmm. Wake County does they they only sample the beach area. They don't sample, you know else mm -hmm. where in the lake but we know that it's not just the beach area that's being used so I feel like you know we need to get something that's representative of the whole lake and not just that one small area it seems like this time last year that I thought it was the state that shut down Falls Lake uh, swimming area but it could have been Wake County mm -hmm. I'm not 100% on that I'm, I don't know. we're I'm not in an area that area normally area. has um, water quality issues with the exception of um, the Gen X thing, which <laughs> is a completely separate thing, yeah. mm -hmm. but that doesn't affect this lake, yeah. what's been happening with Gen, Gen X. We don't have anything coming in. No upstream. So, but. Um, okay, any other questions? No, thank you, Ms. Green. Thank you. Thank you, Beth, for all your work on this. We'll bring this back to you once. Um, 
Mr. Hartzog has had an opportunity to comment on it. We'll bring it back for um, your approval. Okay. Next, we have consideration of the purchase of a 2018 Roughneck Big River floor flat bottom boat with Yamaha F70 four stroke motor trailer and additional accessories per attached quote from AK McCallum Company for the amount of $16,000. $681.16. This is behind tab six. Yep. Madam this Mayor, this is the um, the boat that Public Works uh, requested and budgeted for, and the you all approved the budget um, for the maintenance at the lake. Okay. Are Any we going to use that boat enough to spend that much money? Yeah, yeah they're going to clean the debris out of the lake. So... That's it's been goal. budgeted for. It's, it's currently budgeted. been approved. Mm -hmm. So I make a motion we approve this item on the agenda. A second. I have a motion and second. All those in favor signify. Oh, one quick question. Yes. All right, question. We get the sales tax back on that, don't we? Every six months? Um, Do we still have? No. Every six months or is it I think a we get a every refund yearly? Every yearly. Do we get the sales tax, Drew? We get sales tax back on that, Drew? On the purchase of the boat. Reimburse it at yes, the end of the year, I believe. That's about five hundred dollars or something toward it. Okay. Okay. Any other questions, discussion? All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Seeing none opposed. Next, we have our manager's report. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and I don't have a very long report. Um, I will let you all know that um, Public Works staff. Uh, we'll be meeting with Mr. Stephen Fleming on the 17th of July to go over his initial drawings, um, what he has prepared. Great. Um, so hopefully um, following that, I'm not sure if there'll be any tweaking or what, but I'm hopeful um, if not the this, this second meeting in July, maybe the first meeting of August, we'll be bringing something forward to you all. Um, he'll be making a presentation. The Johnson Street sidewalk update on that. Public Works staff will be meeting with McGill Associates on July 16th to discuss the progress or lack of progress, perhaps, maybe is what I should say, on that project. Um, curbing at the lake parking lot to mitigate the water runoff through the concession stand. I had reported to you all that there was a problem. Um, I believe that they had an even bigger problem this past weekend. We are addressing that separate issue, but um, they had a meeting today and the contractor will start work tomorrow and hopefully that'll mitigate um, the water runoff that they are experiencing in the concession stand. The Rockfish Road sidewalk, the update to that is that the contractor has mobilized. The materials for the stormwater phase of the project have been delivered and the initial asphalt cut done for excavation. However, after initiating excavation, the contractor has concerns with the depth of the fiber optic line. Um, the line was previously identified, but no depth was known until the initial excavation began. McGill Associates engineers are discussing a way forward for box locations to continue with the project. So that's why you're not seeing any work over there presently. Um, the final damaged area from Hurricane Matthew, the River Road project has been completed with the exception of seating on both sides of the culvert and River Road has been opened. The request to DOT for the speed limit change for the northbound lane on, or the, on Ma North Main Street, Public Works Director Hector Cruz received a call from the Office of Traffic Management of DOT. Technicians explained that for the speed limit to change on that location requested, other changes must take place at the intersection with timing and sequencing of the lights. The standards followed by traffic management are in accordance with Federal Highway Administration safety standards and the local office of Division 6 must follow their guidelines to make those changes. They will notify us when they make a determination on making that speed limit change. Um, and then I just have one final thing because I've been kind of reporting to you weekly how many code enforcement issues have been investigated. Last week, there were 32 inspections done 
on possible code enforcement violations, not signs, but code enforcement, other code enforcement violations. And 11 of those were found to be in compliance and the remainder were, um, were issued um, letters. So, and that is all that I have other than I just really want to publicly thank everybody that was involved in the celebration, the lake celebration, particularly the volunteers and the, the employees that worked. Um, I did not hear one complaint from anybody that had to work or put in extra hours, um, especially Mr. Bullock. He did it without even a, you know, I'm tired. So I just wanted to publicly thank everybody that was involved, all the sponsors, all the, all the um, volunteers, the committee members, all of you that attended, um, and all of our citizens. Uh, I think it was um, very well received and it, it couldn't have gone any better in my opinion. So. Which way to next year, you see? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're hoping next year will be bigger and better, but maybe not five days in a row. <laughs> so um, I think that was a bit, a bit, a <laughs> yeah. bit much, but they, they handled it, you know, very seamlessly. And not, like I said, not one complaint from anyone. So I just really commend, we have excellent employees here and we have excellent volunteers mm -hmm. that are always ready and willing to help. And the Lake Celebration Committee would like to request that they be called a festival celebration committee if possible the board would have to make that approval and that they go ahead and, and the, we look Start at planning. putting a spring festival in comparing the calendars of the other municipalities and putting the they want to headline the cardboard boat race as the the main event but yeah. they're looking at um if we could um go ahead and start that now so that they could ha have a really big spring festival and i know Mr. Bullock has heard them all say that this would be something they'd love to carry forward, but at a different time. Keep the 4th of July separate, keep Old Mill Day <laughs> separate, but let this be a spring festival. Can we put our next uh, agenda? Yeah, yeah, we can put it on the that next. That would be good, and I think maybe come up with um, looking at some calendar dates, because what we could do is we could go ahead and get a date, we could start looking for sponsors, and we've already got uh, members Credit Union has already volunteered to sponsor the cardboard boat race mm -hmm. again for next year. So. Okay. And along with the VFW. And the VFW. Too. With the trophies. Yeah. Yep. All right. Any, does anything else? All right. Next, That's we go to our Thank you. committee liaisons. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Mitchell of Historic Preservation Commission. Uh, I had reported at our last meeting and um, about the, the workings of the meeting as well as uh, Town Manager Adams, but I will reiterate that. Uh, Jody Frazier and other committee members are working to finalize the, uh, I believe it's the ordinance and rules of procedure, some other documents to go to Mr. Uh, Dan Hartsmith's mayor. So, and then they come to us and we will act quickly on it once it gets to us and we'd ask if you could turn that around pretty quick because it's been a long time coming. Here it is. Is that it? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, Lake Advisory Committee, Commissioner Edwards. Um, as we said before, we're meeting every other um, week, and so our next meeting would be the 17th. Okay, that might be it. Thank you. Okay, Commissioner Rigg and the Appearance Committee. Uh, <coughs> I did not attend a meeting this past month. I don't think we even had one. Yeah, we did. We did? Well, I missed it, but we were tied up in some other things. But we had uh, <coughs> another meeting on the same night or something. I don't remember what it was. But I didn't get the details on that and I apologize. Do you have Miss uh, Johnson? Miss Kathy, I would you? Would you, you don't have your minutes? Okay. Well, if we can get those minutes then we can put those out. Yeah, I need to get with you and get those minutes and make sure I have them even if I'm there. Okay, next we have uh, Parks and Rec, Commissioner Larson. Parks and Rec. Uh, we did not have a quorum, which is becoming a habit, I think. So I wanted to check with the rules of 
getting Kenny people that are going to work on that committee that are going to be there and help. He's got a full load. Uh, what it what the rules are as far as how many meetings can they miss before it's time to open up the committee for new volunteers? Yeah, I know we drafted. We drafted something. Yeah. I believe it's three, yeah. and yeah. it's up to the liaison to bring that back to the board. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you've got members that are missing three consecutive meetings, yeah. Yeah. then you can certainly bring that back to the board, and you all can vote to. And you just have to have them. the actual uh, attendance dates, okay. and then the board can vote to uh, remove those, and then open it up for new members to apply. And I will get with Kenny, and we'll get a list together. Okay. All right, Commissioner Bellflowers, Veterans Committee, and RULAC. Thank you, Mayor. I want to start off with um, this morning I was honored and um, humbled to represent the town and yourself as well at the uh, 100th birthday of the United States Army Warrant Officer Corps at Force Comp this morning. Uh, it took place at 10 o'clock, and I read the uh, resolution along with uh, Mayor Pro Tem from the City of Fayetteville, Ted Mon. And uh, it was a huge event attended there in Force Com headquarters. And if you've ever been in the building, right in the front part of that, they call it the Thunderdome, and that's where all the, you know, it's three different floors in Force Com. Uh, so, and I thank you for allowing me uh, the opportunity to do that. It was very rewarding. I was there with the dedication of the building, and I hadn't been back in over a year, so it was kind of kind of great to go back to it. Uh, going on with the Veterans Affairs Commission, uh, they met on June 28th, uh, all members attended, and uh, continuing the work of uh, uh, Heroes Homecoming uh, for the November 9th through the 12th and the town's role in all the events, and I believe everything is going to be centered on Sunday now, on actually on Veterans Day, of what the town events are going to be. I know Angie... Um, from the committee uh, is looking for a final report to her by June 18th, and I'll be uh, working with the chair, Alan Miller, to ensure that we've got that final report representing the municipality of Hope Mills in our efforts uh, during that committee. Uh, there was one thing that they did ask, um, let me back up, now one other thing before I get to that is that I, I think this is a huge event that's coming our way in November, like, like in past uh, Hero Homecoming events. Uh, this is the sixth one, and um, I think we're going to, in fact, I know we are, we're going to have a schedule a joint meeting, Mayor, of, of, of all the um, participants that are involved in this, and we'll probably either have it at the chamber or over at the VFW. It'll be one of those locations. And um, just to make sure that all of us, uh, that are participating in this event on Veterans Day are, are all doing the right thing at the right time and uh, everybody knows what everybody's doing. Sometimes you can, you can lose sight of that. So um, that's something that uh, the committee talked about at length uh, and we'll be uh, setting that joint meeting up. The last thing uh, the committee asked, uh, and, and this, is a, this is a pretty big uh, question, I'm just going to I'm just going to ask it on behalf of the committee, is that in August 18th, is uh, Cumberland County has a huge event called the Purple Heart Dinner. And a lot of, a lot of veterans from a lot of municipalities are invited to go there um, and to represent the other municipality. Uh, I don't know if in the past, if Hope Mills has ever attended the Veterans Affairs Commission, or any elected officials for that matter, has ever attended the function? Mayor Deaver did. Did, okay. Mm -hmm. So I wanna ask, the, I, I wanna ask on behalf of the committee, is there some type of funding that we could, could have for at least some of the members of the committee uh, to attend to represent Hope Mills uh, during this uh, huge event that honors our Purple Heart veterans? Uh, from not only Cumberland County, but from our great state. <laughs> I just, I, I'm just gonna ask on, on the behalf of the committee if there was something we could do to do that. If not, then I'll take that back to the committee. Other than that, Mayor, that's the, uh, 
That's the report. Uh, RULAG will not meet again until I think it's August. So uh, that's the only report I have. Uh, and on the Heroes Homecoming, just so you know, I attend those meetings along with the Chamber and along with Millstone 14 and then our Veterans Council. So the, the joint meeting is what we did last year, and we've mm -hmm. held it at the Chamber because there's a conference room there. But with Heroes Homecoming, um, Hope Mills is very involved, and we've got probably more volunteers involved than any of the other municipalities. We do. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the idea mm -hmm. being to unify more of what we do. The other thing is at 11 o'clock on that Sunday, they're asking for anybody that has the church bells or any kind of bells to be rung at, a, at the 11th hour on the 11th day. Um, so that's something else that we're, we've got information out to the churches, but we're going to try to encourage that in Hope Mills also. Um, and then I guess the other thing that's important ab about this event is that um, this year they're tying it to volunteerism, and they're asking for everybody to donate or give six hours to volunteer to do something to make um, the town better or your com county better, but there, there's more information coming on that also because they're looking at getting more people involved in working together, unified. Okay, next we have uh, staff comments. So I'll start with Ms. Starling. Do you have anything? I would just like to thank Melissa and Tiffany, who is not here, for giving me a great welcome and getting me started off on the right foot. Good, thank you. Any more comments, Ms. Adams? No, no thank Mr. you. Mr. Hartzog? Okay, then we have official comments. Does anyone want to start? We're going to start with Commissioner Legg. You have official comments? It'll be very short. I want to thank everyone for all their help, donation of time, who you're volunteering with the Lake Celebration and the police and fire department and the town staff and especially Parks and Recreation for all their hard work for making the return of the Lake Celebration as great as it was. And I look forward to it next year. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Commissioner Larson? I'm good. Commissioner uh, Bellflower? I'd just like to thank all the speakers that took the time tonight to come up here to the podium and, and speak and the residents who came here to hang out with us tonight. It was a productive meeting. I do want to share one thing. Some folks told me something on July 4th after the fireworks. Sometimes you don't, you, you don't hear that you were right or somebody was wrong in what they said. These folks thought passionately that, that the fireworks should have been back down at the lake. And after, after Wednesday night, these guys came up to me and they said, we're sorry, we know now, we know exactly now why they're at the lake park, why they're up at the park and not down at the lake. Because it took them an hour and a half to get out and get through Hope Mills and get and just, just to try to get through the trap again. And they clearly understood that. And they wanted me to know that. Uh, and I really appreciate that. And I just wanted to share that you know, we're not a, we're not a town of 6,000 anymore. We couldn't have done it at the, at the lake. I mean, I wanted to do it. I mean, I wish we could have done it. But you try to do that, and you just lock up the town. And I know that our, our fire chief and police chief know exactly what I'm talking about. It's hard to manage the traffic as it is. But I just wanted to share some comments from some, some folks. It was their first time watching the fireworks in Hope Mills. And that's what they told me. Thank you, ma'am. Clark uh, has been off posted on awards here lately, but I would like to say as a, a board member of the Chamber of Commerce that he was approached by our president to become a fourth member of the Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> so yay, yay, he's done it again. And um, <laughs> I would also like to say, remind people that three-fourths of our population is military connected. and. Um, I, I know we've already made a decision and everything, but I, I just regret that we didn't look further into the names of our towns. I thought that was a mistake. Other folks on Mitchell? I'm good. Try to get y'all out of here in record time, Hope Mills. All right. <laughs> I, too, appreciate everyone coming tonight. 
And I, too, will say that being um, a military brat, being a, the daughter of a Vietnam veteran, being the aunt of Andy Strickland, who is suffering from T PTSD, who is also living in a home that was given to him, I strongly support anything that helps our veterans and our active duty military. And the reason why I say that is because we have become a community for active duty military and retirees. And what better way to so show our support as a town than to recognize the fact that our small community, made up of so very few people as little as 10 years ago, now if you check, you'll find that a greater majority of them have some type of attachment to Fort Bragg. And I think that is something that we need to pay close attention to because we are the place where active duty want to come. Our great schools, our great small town a attitude, and most importantly, how we treat people in, in, our, in our community. So I cannot go without saying that because I truly believe that military means a lot not only to Cumberland County, but it means a lot to Hope Mills. We see that here. You see Jean Clark every meeting. You see Greeley Mitchell. Jesse Bellflowers, and tonight Bill Spate. And I guarantee you, David, military, and there's others in this room that have attachment that I just feel strongly that we need to support those that support us. And having said that, is there anything else that's good for the motion to adjourn? Have a motion to adjourn. And second? Second. Have a good evening.